Elon's putting electrodes in your brain sickle. I can see the future. And it's fruit. Oh, and this is the worst graphics card. It's bad. Oh, come on, NVIDIA. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. And I'm Kyle. And Kyle probably wants to have Elon stick a little pin in him, especially in his brain area. Right in there. And that's exactly what happened, because according to Elon Musk, who is famous for never telling a lie, <laughs> he said on Twitter that the first human has received their Neuralink imprint. I saw it. Implant. I saw a quote tweet of this that was like, <laughs> "What you find in the trash can in a horror game." Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's been going viral. I, I saw it like uh, photoshopped into Dead Space. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Elon says that the first human is recovering well, and initial results show promising neuron spike detections. Now, th and then you learn in the horror game that the neuron spike is what makes them zombies or something. Hopefully your neurons are spiking, buddy. <laughs> they they're spiking too spiky. Oh, uh, okay. You know. You got too much too much juice. Spike kids afraid to leave spike. The movie trilogy with the kids that are spies. So all of this lines up with the timeline that was put forward by Neuralink with regards to FDA approval for first human trials. So it does appear that this is happening. Elon saying that, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist. That's the goal or where they're supposed to get. They are likely so far away. This is probably just them seeing if the whole thing works in the first place. Why we talk about Stephen Hawking already like this? <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> It's, it's an intriguing move. I, I am very less excited about Neuralink knowing other BCIs that are coming onto the market that are taking their clinical approaches a little bit more seriously, especially since Neuralink has been found to have killed over 1,500 animals, including 280 sheep, pigs, and monkeys. You can read details about the horrific stuff these animals had to endure and the deaths that they died. Not pretty stuff, but also as a father who's invested in the medical research and trying to advance science in order to find uh, cures for his son. I also know that unfortunately there are some consequences to trying to figure out how to solve some things that we couldn't solve before with medicine. I just trust Elon Musk wholeheartedly. Do you know? Which is why I'm signing up for Neuralink. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, me. Could anybody please uh, just comment if you're hiring? Today was that rough on you, huh? <laughs> Just need a, I need a fail safe in case anything, you know. Well, you know what my wrong. fail safe was when we went to Disney for the Make a Wish trip. Today's video is sponsor. I was gonna say Reese. Today's video is sponsored by Nexigo and their Hall Effect Gripcon and NS32 Nintendo Switch controllers. Recently, my family and I went on vacation and we made sure to bring along the Nexigo Gripcon controllers. Whether it was downtime in the hotel or gaming during the long car ride, the Gripcon made it more comfortable and enjoyable for my kids to play on their Switches while on the go. The Nexigo Hall Effect Gripcon is an ergonomic handheld controller designed to prevent your hands from cramping during longer gaming sessions. The latest iteration of this controller improved on Nexigo's turbo mode, now being fully adjustable. Save your thumbs from cramping in tense situations by making one button press the same as 20. The ability to spam your desired button 5, 10, or 20 times is easily activated by the T button and controlled by the plus and minus buttons. The Gripcon also comes equipped with the RGB joystick light rings, extra back mappable buttons, motion controls, and non-slip ergonomic design. And if a wireless controller is more your speed, which one of my kids had to use, because only one of them got the Gripcon. Nexigo also offers the NS32 wireless controller. This wireless controller is compatible with all versions of the Switch, including the light, and can be even upgraded to include the Hall Effect sensors, helping to prevent stick drift, allowing you to accurately and skillfully play your games. The NS32 also comes with dual motor vibration, a six axis gyroscope, and fast charging on a long lasting battery. If you're looking for a way to upgrade your Switch experience, pick up one of these controllers from Nexigo today. Big thanks to Nexigo for sponsoring today's video. We use we use those controllers on the trip. Oh no. That was I, a lot of fun. My weird shoe got stuck. Did you get stuck <laughs> on the chair again? Hold on. I'll, I'll help you. How did that happen? There you go. I don't know. You're <laughs> a wild man. And what was a wild concept at one point was TikTok taking over the entire globe with its video features. And now it wants to become the Amazon to your hearts, which they're rolling hearts. out. Yeah, well, they're just trying to get your cash and where your treasure is. That's where your heart will be. That's a I don't understand the reference, but I like it. <laughs> TikTok shop is a feature that has been rolling out where 
trusted creators and influencers could promote different things via the e-commerce platform that TikTok has been trying to develop. But now mm. the latest expansion is TikTok's just going to see if you got a product and they're going to link to it. They want to sell it. They want to. They just want to dominate that way. Not only do they want your viewing habits, they also want your commercial habits as well. So it's just like Everywhere. ultimate drop shipping. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Literally, if it scans a, a coffee mug, it's going to not get you to the Syngap Research Fund site for the coffee mug it's just gonna give you coffee mugs it's here <laughs> look at this thing buy buy this oh that person's wearing clothing here's where you can buy some clothing here are normal human clothes <laughs> now tiktok is in a little bit of a decline it it's not doing great monthly active users fell three percent year over year in 2023 and some people are blaming this huge advertising influx of tiktok it's really annoying it's bad it's bad it's yeah. But also, how do you pay for everything? <laughs> that's no, the, like, I that's get the it. eternal conundrum of creating free products. How do you pay for them? You're not going to make TikToks out of the kindness of your own heart. N I, no, I think plenty of people did. Uh, and I think they were better. <laughs> I think they were better before TikTok was monetized. But then TikTok dies because they don't have money to run the servers. Uh, no, no, no. TikTok, Video content's TikTok expensive. TikTok can have a little money and not all the money. No, they need all of it. The line <laughs> always has to go up. Forever and ever. That's that game they took off Steam. Spec Ops The Line. They took that off of Steam. Somebody will get that joke. Okay. <laughs> well, The Line is continually going up for Apple. They, they're they reporting some big numbers when it comes to their Apple card. This is the first public divulgence of the card's numbers. They have 12 million users for the card that you can only get in the United States. Fun mm. fact. Did you know that? That's the whole population. Yes. <laughs> there are only 12 million people in the U.S. 30% actively use the card making two or more payments per month additionally they've given a billion dollars in daily cash rewards or their cashback program this is probably one of the reasons why goldman sachs is looking to separate the partnership they have lost a lot of money mm -hmm. because it turns out that despite the fact that banks make their money by charging you interest on the things and overdraft fees when when you give it to apple consumers they use it responsibly and they buy apple products at zero percent interest <laughs> The things everybody buys. That's what everybody in America buys. Groceries and iPhones. <laughs> I mean, there's only 12 million people, and how many iPhones has Apple sold? It's it, Probably 13 million somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who knows? But we want to sell stuff to you. Here's, here's our version of the TikTok shop. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet, and hey, deals. Starting off today, we have the lovely Zelman 10X Performer CPU Air Cooler available in white for only $18.99, making it $31 off. Then next up, we have the gorgeous looking Bear Dynamic Pro X M70 Dynamic XLR Microphone for only $69.99, making it $29.01 off. And then lastly, today we have the Asus Tough Gaming 27-inch 1440p 180Hz IPS monitor for only $199, making it $50. $50 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett and Kyla for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. Well, we are finding out what kind of a deal the Apple Vision Pro is. Reviews started to drop yesterday with regards to the VR headset. Where's... Can I have the MetaQuest one for... Wah, 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 okay, wah, you can wear it. That's fine. Because I, I need to pay attention no, to what I'm doing. you need to read it. All right. Through All right. The Apple... It has passed through. You can see everything, right? Right uh, now? I can, I can see the battery symbol telling me it's not charged. So a lot of reviews are praising the fact that the screens are very good on this thing. The pass-through is amazing. It's great as having an external display for any sort of Mac device that you're working on. And as other features that you would not necessarily think are a problem. <laughs> like the fact that when you have the new Apple Watches, when you double tap, it might interfere with your double tap on your vision pro but the new software locks that off again the screens are great the pass through is amazing however there are some weird issues with the fact that it's heavy on your face but that does get alleviated by the fact that they include a dual loop band like you see on the MetaQuest, where there's this top band as well as a back band because the one that originally came with the vision pro is only a back band but that led to nearly everybody complaining about just how heavy this thing is despite the fact that does it, it doesn't have the battery. The battery is a separate pack. It's a wild thing. Additionally, the battery is only like 3,000 milliamp hours and it's heavier than like a regular iPad. It's a lot. So the Vision Pro appears to be what 
Apple's first gen products tend to usually be, which is overpriced software betas and them just trying to figure out how to establish a product category. But then when you get to where we are right now with things like the Apple Watch, I remember the first one was a tremendous mess. And now the Ultra 2 and the Series 9 are actually fully uh, coherent devices. And so maybe the Vision Pro is the future of spatial computing, or maybe it's just going to be uh, a, a mark in the history books of Apple's failures. That's the guy from... In, uh, um, in, uh, what... Uh... Why do they call it an oven? Mark. Oh, the guy who owns the Dallas Mavericks. He made those things. Oh, Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible. That's the guy who made these headsets. What's also incredible is the fact that the 4080 Super should have reviews live today. So I don't have my review of the 4080 Super ready because we went on our Make-A-Wish trip and I wasn't around to actually test it. And you can see my uh, face oil really stuck to that matte black. It's definitely... It's definitely on there. But one of the big updates that's coming out from Noctua is that they're going to be releasing a 4080 Super Noctua Edition four slot cooler. <gasps> this thing's a thonky donk. <gasps> Look at how good it is. It's big and fat and chunky. I want it. Yeah? Yeah, put it. Put it in your Thermaltake Tower 300. It'll fit. Do I have it yet? I'll work with them on that. <laughs> but let's go ahead and talk about another product that I'm excited for. The MSI Claw officially getting its price announced by MSI and them making more confusing announcements. I am very confuddled by this device. So the MSI Claw is gonna start at $699 for the Intel Ultra 5 135H, which is the same as what we have in this One X player. Oh. It's gonna have 16 gigs of RAM, as well as 512 gigs of storage. If you wanna upgrade that to one terabyte of storage with the Ultra 7 155H, you're gonna be looking at $799. Now, a lot of the performance benchmarks you can kinda see in some of the Meteor Lake reviews. This is gonna be a capable device that's probably going to be very closely comparative to things like the RG Ally or the Legion Go. So the price seems a little good. Video Cards mentions that there were leaks that hinted that MSI was developing a 32 gig version of the Claw. I touched it. I, the Claw that I played I with at CES. I saw you play with it. I pulled up it. Task Manager and there was 32 gigs on there. And then they were like, what are you doing? Stop Whoa. looking at that. <laughs> So they're not selling that one. Additionally, it's also very confusing because MSI is claiming that there's variable refresh rate on the claw, which I, according to something I read yesterday, MSI said to an outlet that their variable refresh rate does not dynamically change. You can set it. It was it was something like 48, 60, 90 and 120. You'd, you could manually change so it So like a normal screen. Yes, but so uh, with like a lot of handhelds and laptops, they can only run at that fixed, like that's what's built, yeah. baked in is that it runs at that fixed re uh, refresh rate. The Legion Go, you can swap between 60 and 144, but they don't call that variable refresh rate. However, MSI told The Verge that it's actually going to be a dynamically variable refresh rate where it will automatically dynamically shift between 48 and 120. So that's the good way to do it. But I've I've read between multiple outlets within the last few days that it's going to be either dynamic or not dynamic and you just have to figure it out yourself. But what's just as confusing as that and the worst graphics card that's probably going to launch in 2024 if, unless AMD wants to prove me wrong. We're not talking about the 4080 Super for which all of the reviews likely dropped right about now. We're talking about the 3056 gig. I talked about this, how it was a little cut down. It was a little problematic, but at least it came with the benefit that it was only 70 watts. So you didn't need an external power connector. Mm -hmm. However, this has now been launched at a retailer in Austria, and we have found out, at least according to them, the specs that are gonna launch, and it is different than every other report we have gotten. Okay. And it's worse. <laughs> So the initial rumor was that it was going to be very close to a 3050. It was just going to have cut down VRAM. Then video cards reported that it was actually going to have cut down CUDA cores, cut down clock speeds, and also the cut down VRAM. Turns out it's got even more cut down cores. It's going to 2048, not 2560. I and can't help but see the TDP yeah, there. <laughs> and then according to the Aus Austrian retailer, it's not a 70 watt TDP. It's 130 watts like the normal one. So you need a power connector. Boo! Boo. Boo if real. Boo. This is such a bad move. Video Cards is saying that the retailer is getting it wrong. However, it does look like the retailer copy and pasted it from MSI's website directly. And also they are putting out specs that nobody else has said. So it's weird that they would just 
make up their own specs. So it's not quite clear what's going on with the 3056 gig, but in case you wanted a new low end entry card that was gonna rock your system like a hurricane, this ain't it. The Palette Storm X. That was, it was, it was a bat. It was a real stretch of a joke. I'm sorry. What else is around that 180 mark? <laughs> mark. Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, we haven't like we're not doing bought that. parts for long enough that I don't know how much things cost anymore. We're just a sham. <laughs> we're a shell of who we should be. Sorry, that's the that's the upstairs Brett coming out. Whoa, Anyways, whoa. let's go to the outside you reading your comments. We got Crane coming in with some hot spicy comments on uh my quibble with AMD calling the new CPUs Ryzen 9000. Service? That's what I'm talking about, saying, I don't get how so many people are surprised that Zen 5 is Ryzen 9000. They've always released their full Zen architectures in 2000 steps. Zen 1 was 1000, Zen 2 was 3000, Zen 3 is 5000, Zen 4 is 7000, so why would Zen 5 suddenly be Ryzen 8000? Also, I bet my money that Zen 6 will either be Ryzen 11,000 or something completely different, but not Ryzen 10,000. The, the reason is because it's stupid. I don't care that AMD has a history of doing it. It's a bad naming scheme to which several people are, are saying. People are confused because they were so unclear with their new naming scheme that people would believe it would apply to all of their products, not just their mobile lineup. I didn't believe that. I knew that AMD was only talking about their mobile lineup, but the mobile lineup at least had coherency. It had sensibility to it. What AMD is choosing to do with all of their naming schemes is just be bad at branding. It's just bad maneuvers. The 4080 Super, good branding. It, it's good. I like this. It's good name. Good Super's a great thing. I'm gonna wear out the fan. Don't do that. It's fine. <laughs> I guess still gotta benchmark it. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not questioning whether AMD was gonna do it. I just think that it's a. It's a dumb idea. It should be called Ryzen 8000 because it's launching in 2024. Keep it simple. Keep it s smart. Or tell me. Double down. Make they, it worse. No, they are doing that. That's make it worse. Call Ryzen 10,000. Or you know what they do? They go past Intel and they launch their 15th gen. They call it Ryzen 15,000. But then they change that, the 15, so it's not even called Ryzen X, it, X3D. They oh. change it. What do they call it? Verizon. No. Verizon. Oh. They buy Verizon. <laughs> That's such a good idea. Now let's talk about the idea of removing WordPad because Miguel Rodriguez said, watch WordPad come back as a beginner friendly IDE with co-pilot assistant shenanigans. It has, and it'll have Clippy. Ooh, yeah. Did they bring Clippy back as an AI already? That no. feels like something they would do. I, I feel like it would be a good nostalgia play, but it's a bad Somebody's idea. Somebody's probably done it as like an open source thing. Yeah, but it's probably like that thing that was uh, malware the Bonsai Buddy or whatever. Bonzi Buddy! Oh, this guy. yeah, yeah, Bonzi Buddy. Yeah, he, he was just malware, which is likely <laughs> what uh, an AI clippy is if you're finding one out on the internet. Sonic Phoenix saying, I like WordPad for how lightweight it is. It's a nice in-between of zero formatting with notepad and taking a million years to start up with a massive doc file sizes like Google Docs or Word. And then a Den Nasu saying, WordPad is what I used to make covers for my mixtapes in the 90s. Wavy text, Word art, FTW, wavy text. Not bad. Not bad, good moves. I like that one. And then the lateral saying, yeah, Kyle is an amalgamation of all of the Animaniacs and Pinky. Like the the mouse Pinky? The the it, stupid it, mouse from Pinky and the Brain? Are you serious? Did you just call him stupid? He was the the ringleader. He was the one who was pulling all the shots. Did they reveal that in the end? No, but that's if you if you've watched the show, one's a genius, that's Pinky. The other's yeah. insane, that was Brain. It was it was a Oh, I thought no, you, they made that was the whole. It was subverting your expectations. I never paid that much. Did you know attention. that the Animaniacs was made by Steven Spielberg? <laughs> and Broke Dad saying, with last week's trip in mind, I have been trying to imagine Kyler visiting Disney World, and I'm finding it difficult. Kyler's not part of my family. <laughs> <laughs> Kyler did not go to Disney World. It's not like Make a Wish was like, hey, can, you can bring your immediate family, and then the nuisance in your office. And we got James Cavanaugh saying, Kyle without a hat is especially jarring. He's delightful, but I'm scared and confused. I thought I, I was going to be able to that. go two days without wearing a hat. And both this guy yeah. and Dez said something about me not wearing a hat today. I 
sir. Yesterday, I knew you looked different, but I couldn't figure out why. I was like, did he get a haircut? And I was like, no, he got a haircut before he went to CES. Why would he get a second one? And then I let it go, and it's the hat. Yeah. Don't stop. Don't stop what? Whatever you want to do, I'm here to support you. Thanks. If you don't want to wear a hat, you don't have to wear a hat. I, I won't keep making comments on it. I just didn't want to wear a hat today and yesterday. You don't have to. And if you want to wear one tomorrow, feel free. I won't make any, okay. any comments. I promise you. Stretch Deadass saying, this AMD naming sh is honestly really annoying and confusing. Why not just standardize it so that all your chips are named based on the year like they did with the 8000 series? This whole mobile only generation sh is just annoying. I agree. I include this one because I agree. Well, just do I what- I think it's nonsense. Everybody do what Samsung did. Oh, just change it? Change it so it's just the year. Like S24, it's the year. That's yeah. the one coming out in the 24 year. Yeah. Easy. Like how, old, how old's that one? Is it before whatever the when S20 the, came out? Because then it gets more difficult. When the S7 come out? That's hard. See, I'm 2016. not sure about got, that one. That one's difficult. But the S20, I know when that one came out. Yeah, 2016. S3, <laughs> no the idea. S7. I had the S7. S3, 2012? When, when, when the Galaxy S come out. Did they make an S? Did we call it the Galaxies? Standardize your naming, peoples. Galaxies. Good way to end this.